Chocolate is delicious. And nowadays, there's such a wide range of products out there. You've got your really basic chocolate like Hershey's that I believe only has like 10% cacao in it. It's mostly sugar, binders, that kind of thing. But let's face it, it tastes kind of good. And then you've got your really nice high-end single origin chocolate brands that really take the whole process seriously, are very transparent about everything, and make some damn good chocolate. And then you've got what I'm about to make. It's not something you'd come across in your average grocery store, or any grocery store for that matter. Chocolate fresh from a cacao pot. Now, this is a cacao pot. And as you can see, they come in all sorts of colors, shapes, and sizes. What we're going for when we make chocolate is something beautifully smooth on the bottom, and we want that really nice snap. Listen. Now, about 70% of the world's cacao beans come from the Ivory Coast, Ghana, Nigeria, and Cameroon. These beauties are from Ecuador. Let's open them up. I'll start by karate chopping a couple pods. Inside are the cacao beans. These have a beautiful white flesh around them that you can drink the water from, meaning cacao is actually a fruit. The beans are really slimy, and in my opinion, have a flavor that's somewhat similar to lychee, maybe a little bit of citrus, and some Jolly Rancher. It's a really hard to describe flavor, but it's one of my favorite fruits in the world. This is what the inside of the seeds look like. They're a beautiful purple color, and as you roast them, they begin to turn a darker brown color. We'll start by taking all the seeds and placing them into a bowl. This is more than enough for a couple chocolate bars. I'm now gonna cover these up and let them ferment. The fermentation allows them to develop those flavors we know and love in chocolate. This will take about a week. The beans have fully fermented. They have an alcoholic smell to them, have turned a little bit brown, and are ready for the second step of the process of making chocolate, roasting. We'll take a small sheet tray and dump our cacao seeds across it. I'll spread these all out in a nice even layer. Notice I still have some of that flesh that's slightly dried up on the outside of each pot. That's okay, we'll remove the shells after we roast. I'll roast these at 300 Fahrenheit for about an hour and a half or until they're clearly well browned. As you can see, these are dry and brittle. First, we'll peel away the shell, revealing the bean inside. If I crumble this up, this makes cacao nibs, which you may recognize. They're often sprinkled on top of things like smoothie bowls. It can take a while to sort all these out, but because I'm making just one bar, this should be plenty. We'll first dump in all of our cacao nibs. I'll follow this with just a light sprinkle of sugar. That's it. This chocolate's gonna be simple, delicious, and pure. And no, it's not gonna be too bitter. Then we blend it up. After a few minutes of blending, it'll be a fine powder like this. Just let it keep going and wait. Eventually, you'll get a fine paste. Turn this off. Pour this into a chocolate mold. I'm not gonna bother with tempering this chocolate. Instead, I'll just toss it in a freezer. And what we'll end up with is a smooth looking chocolate bar with a slightly granular crunch from the sugar that actually cuts down on the bitterness. I'll smooth this over and our chocolate's ready to go into the freezer. And here it is. Our chocolate's ready to open up. As you can see, we have a really, really nice smooth finish on the bottom and that's what I was looking for. But here is the moment of truth. Now that, right there, is our very own chocolate bar. We just made chocolate from cacao. Give yourself a little pat on the back, that's beautiful. Even just going through the process by hand of what I just did and getting from this to this is fascinating to me. Obviously, it's no surprise that foods go through a variety of processes to get where they end up, at least for some products. But to actually do it and see it by hand is a totally different animal. Let's see if this passes the couple of our tests. The first thing when it comes to chocolate is psych. You want this nice, warm, brown color, and I think we passed the test on that one. The second, touch. We want a smooth, silky surface, and we've nailed that. Third, sound. That's the snap test. Perfect. We've nailed the snap test down to the last square. Fourth, smell. You wanna feel like you're in a chocolate factory when you smell a good piece of chocolate that should rush through your entire body. That deep, rich cacao flavor that we worked so hard to get, and I get it. And last but not least, hopefully you can guess this one, taste. Mmm. That is delicious. What's amazing about this chocolate is that even though we only put cacao and sugar, this has a ton of flavors on its own. The main note I think I get is vanilla, but believe me when I tell you that there are a symphony of flavors in this chocolate bar. I am really proud of the chocolate that we just made. I'll be shipping cacao pods all the way from Ecuador to my home turf of Boston all year to make these videos for you. So don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And if you really don't want to miss any of my crazy cacao adventures, don't forget to turn on notifications. I'm gonna go finish this chocolate.